Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Let's crack it with Satyajit. If you are new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon to stay updated with the latest tips and trending topics and interview practices. Today we are diving back into our exciting series to help you ace your electrical engineering technician interview. This is the part 2 of our 50 electrical engineering interview questions for technicians. Get ready to cover the next 25 questions with clear and easy to understand answers and don't miss out on the bonus tips at the end to give you an extra edge in your interviews. So let's jump in. The first question, what is impedance in an electric circuit? So answer, imagine you are walking through a forest and there are branches and rocks blocking your path. Impedance is like these obstacles but in an electrical circuit. It's the total resistance a circuit offers to the flow of alternating current. It's a mix of resistance, that's like a straight path, and reactance, that likes the branches and the rocks, and it is measured in ohms. Understanding impedance is super important because it tells you how much the current will be slowed down or changed in the circuit. Ready for more? Let's see how machines think up perfectly in our next question. So explain the working principle of a synchronous motor. So, Picture is a dance where everyone perfectly in sync. A synchronous motor just likes, works like that. It runs at a constant speed matching the frequency of the supply current. When the current gets its power, the rotor inside locks in with a rotating magnetic field produced by the stator, making the motor turn at the same speed as the current. It's like magic, but it's really just smart engineering. Think. That's cool. Wait until you hear about how we turn AC into DC. So the next question is, what is the function of a rectifier? Imagine you have a wave of water coming at you, but you only want the wave that is coming to you. So a rectifier does exactly that with the electricity. It converts alternating current into direct current using diodes, which only allow current to flow in one direction. So rectifiers are key in power supplies for all sorts of gadgets. Ever wonder why factories use three wires instead of one? Keep watching. So what is a three-phase system and what is its advantages? A three-phase system is like having three waves of current flowing in synchronous with each other starting at a different time. It uses three alternating currents, each offset by 120 degrees. This makes it super efficient for transmitting power over long distances and perfect for heavy duty industrial machines because it provides a steady and power supply to electricity. Next up, let's untangle another important concept that might sound tricky but is actually super interesting. Define reactance and its types. A reactance is like invisible forces that push and pull on our current waves, making them resist changes in their flow. It has two types, one is inductive reactance caused by inductors and the capacitive reactance caused by the capacitors. Inductive reactance changes in resist the change in current while capacitive reactance resist the change in voltage. Both are crucial in understanding how AC circuits behave. Okay, you are curious about how switches can control big machines but with just a tiny signal. Let's find out. What is a relay and its types? A relay is like a tiny robot switch that controls a big machine. It uses a small electrical signal to control a much larger electrical circuit. There are different types of relays including electromagnetic relays, solid state relays and read relays. Each type is used based on how fast you need it to switch the voltage and current required. Ok, you want to save money? and energy, let's talk about power factor. So next question is, explain the concept of power factor and its importance. So the answer is, power factor is like measuring how efficiently you are using the energy. It is the ratio between the real power that the energy does the work to the apparent power that is the total energy used. A high power factor means you are using your energy efficiently which saves money and make sure your electrical system is working at its best. Next, transformers are everywhere, but what do they really do? So let's break it down. 
So, what are the different types of transformer? Transformers are like magical boxes that change electricity levels. They are step up transformers that increase the voltage. There are step down transformers who decrease the voltage. Other types include power transformers, distribution transformers, isolation transformers and auto transformers. Each one has a special job in making sure electricity gets where it needs to go safely and efficiently. Have you ever wondered how your fan or washing machine motor works? Here is the secret. Describe the principle of operation of an induction motor. An induction motor works on the principle of electromagnetic induction. When electricity flows through the motor, it creates a magnetic field that interacts with the rotor. The interaction creates a force that makes the rotor turn, power powering your fan, washing machine and many other devices. Okay. So now let's have a safety first. Let's talk about why grounding is so important. So the next question is, what is the significance of earthing in electrical systems? Earthing is like giving electricity a safe way to go home. It provides a path for fault currents to flow safely into the ground, preventing electric shocks and damage to the equipment. It's essential for keeping everyone safe and make sure your electrical system works correctly. Okay, now you are ready to learn about a powerful switch that can handle lots of electricity. Let's explore thyristors. So what is a thyristor and its application? A thyristor is a special type of switch that can handle very high power. It controls and rectifies current flow and can switch large amount of electricity with a small control signal. You will find them in motor speed controls, light dimmers and industrial power switching. Okay, hold on. Do you know what is series or parallel? Let's see how different circuits stack up. Explain the difference between the series and parallel circuit. Think of a series circuit like a single path. Like a hiking trail, every step you take affects the next one. All components are connected end to end so that the same current flows through each one of them. Whereas parallel circuit is like multiple paths, like you have in a park. Each path operates independently. Components are connected across the same voltage source. So the current gets divided among them. Okay, you have seen fuses, very tiny but very mighty. Let's see how they protect our devices. So what is the role of a fuse in an electric circuit? A fuse is like a superhero that sacrifices itself to save your gadgets. It contains a thin wire that melts if too much of current flows through it breaking the circuit and stopping the flow of electricity. This prevents damage to your devices and reduces the risk of fire. Voltage stabilizers are like bodyguards of your electronics, right? So let's find out how. Describe the function of a voltage stabilizer. A voltage stabilizer is like a bodyguard of your electronics. It keeps the voltage level constant despite the fluctuations in the input voltage. This protection ensures that your device runs smoothly without any damage from voltage spikes or drops. Generator or alternator. What's the difference? Let's break it out. So what is the difference between a generator and an alternator? Both generator and alternator convert mechanical energy into electrical energy. But what's the key difference? A generator produces direct current, whereas a alternator produces alternating current. Alternators are more efficient and are more commonly used in modern vehicles and power generation systems. Okay, have you ever heard of harmonic distortion? Let's make it simple. Explain the concept of harmonic distortion in electrical systems. So harmonic distortion is like adding extra unwanted beats to your favorite song. It occurs when non-linear loads like electronic devices create deviation from the normal frequency of the power supply. This can cause inefficiency and potential damage to electrical systems. The next question is, what's about a circuit breaker? How it works or what is the function of a circuit breaker? A circuit breaker is like a safety switch that protects your home. It automatically stops the flow of current when there is an overcurrent or short circuit, preventing damage and potential hazards. Unlike fuses, circuit breakers can be reset and reused, making them a reliable choice. So, what's the future of power? Yes, you guessed it right. 
it's solar power so let's see how the solar power or solar cells work so describe the working principle of a solar cell a solar cell is like a tiny factory that turns sunlight into electricity when light photons hit the semiconductor material inside the cell they excite electrons creating a flow of electricity and solar cells are used in solar panels to harness renewable energy from the sun okay we have different wiring systems for different needs so let's explore what are the different types of wiring systems used in electrical installation wiring systems are like roads that connect a city there are several types including conduit wiring concealed wiring surface wiring and each type has its own advantage and is chosen based on the specific needs of the installation such as safety aesthetics and durability okay batteries power our world so what are the different types of batteries and they are uses a battery are like portable power banks for our gadgets there are several types including lead acid battery which are used in cars lithium ion battery which is used in smartphones and laptops nickel and cadmium batteries used in emergency lighting each type has its own characteristics and is chosen based on the specific requirement of the device okay so how does you measure electric power let's find out so what is the unit of electric power and how it is calculated electrical power is measured in watts it is calculated by multiplying voltage by current and the power factor for example if you have a light bulb that uses 10 volts and 2 amperes of current then the power consumed will be around 20 watts if it is a completely resistive load knowing how to calculate power helps you understand the energy consumption and the efficiency now let's look into what's inside a control panel so next question is what are the components of an electrical control panel an electrical control panel is like brain of a machine it contains various components such as circuit breakers relays switches transformers and control devices these components work together to manage and control the electrical systems ensuring safe and efficient operation wondering why some wires are thicker and the other is not okay so what is the question behind this yes what is the significance of wire gauge in electrical installation so wire gauge is like the thickness of a straw you use the thicker the wire the more current can flow through it so wire gauge is measured in american wire gauge that is awg units and choosing the right wire gauge is crucial for ensuring that wires can handle the electrical load without overheating or causing fire okay hold on it's rainy season so we must have lightning protection how do we stay safe okay what is a lightning arrester and its function a lightning arrester is like a superhero that protects buildings from lightning strikes it provides a path for the lightning to travel into the ground preventing damage to the electrical systems and structures lightning arresters are essential for protecting both residential and industrial installations so now we are into the final question ready to boost your interview confidence and let's go what are the key safety features in electrical engineering safety in electrical engineering is like wearing a helmet while by riding a bike key practices include turning off of power before working on electrical systems using proper personal protective equipments and following the standards that regularly inspect and maintain the equipments so these practices ensure safety for everyone and helps prevent accidents also you have to use the proper tool and the proper protective equipment each time you go in and work some protective equipments are like safety goggles safety gloves and safety and insulated tools so now we have reached the 25 questions that's all for this video i hope these 25 questions and answers help you feel more prepared and confident for your electrical engineering interview remember practice makes perfect so keep reviewing these concepts stay tuned for more valuable content and as well as relate your answers to real life scenarios as i did while explaining these videos so this is the bonus tip i would give you so don't forget to like share subscribe to my channel for more helpful content keep learning stay motivated and i wish you all the best for your next interview i'll see you in the next video thank you